to let you hear about all the knowledges and tips that our leaders have gained on foot. For that, we have members from four different branches that have very recently opened Hong Kong, New Zealand, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. We are also about to unleash some very live tips from successful Atomians. Let's not wait anymore. Let's meet them right away, shall we? Yes. On, on to, to the, the OnTech Talk. Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to AWSS. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Hello. hello. Yes, hello. Great, I am excited great. to be here. Um, so my goal today is to try to answer some of your questions, to try to get to know you more, and to be of help if I can, right? Because in Atomy, we always help each other. We work together. It's the super synergy of heart. We have so many um, members being registered every single day all over the world. And today, we have the opportunity to speak to you all from Hong Kong, from New Zealand, from Turkey, and from the UK. So I want to thank you all for coming. and. Let's talk a little bit about how long has your office branch been open? So uh, let me go first. And uh, Hong Kong office opened in October 2020. Mm. So it's been 10 months since then. Since then, yeah. Wow, and you all are just growing so fast. How about uh, New Zealand? How long have you guys been open? Well, yes, we opened this March. So it's about six months now. And then much easier to, um, to approach it to, the, um, to you know, the consumers and distributors. And then easy to take the, um, you know, um, uh, daily abroad. So that is much, you know, much easier than before. Yes, that's awesome. You know, I love New Zealand. Before the office was open, um, I had the opportunity to go and speak there and did the first seminar in New Zealand and got to tour. So it was amazing. Love it. Uh, it was, yes. of course, before COVID. I wish I was uh, there in the UK and there in Turkey as well. So how long has uh, Turkey been open? It's been two months, actually. We are uh, so new in this uh, Italy. Mm. Uh, but uh, we didn't uh, too many um, Masters. Yeah, already. lots of individuals yeah. already growing and building yeah. their mastership in Turkey. Yes, yes. You're, you're going to be next, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Go yes. for it. <laughs> there you go. Right. There you go. And uh, UK, how long have you guys been open? Just officially launched last 28th of July. And we are on our second month. And on our opening, we mm. had seven sales masters, which includes our joys here, mm. and few diamond masters. And on our second wave, I'm joining that group of sales masters for the Amazing. Europe and UK feel a difference with uh, the office when it wasn't there and now since it's open you guys see that the change is there and the business is growing how do you guys feel about that the atom business is really going crazy unstoppable here in uk and europe mm. as a matter of fact uh, when the uk opened i have reduced my logistic cost by 40 percent and my uh, product revenue went up by 60 percent wow. and i am really really so proud to inform all of you guys that i maintain my auto sales mastership for two consecutive periods and my goal is to become asm every period Awesome, yes. We're buying from Korea and getting their items shipped over there. But now with the branch and the warehouse in your own countries, no need to do that anymore, right? How about, uh, how about you, Chris? How's, how are the things uh, different from the office being there and uh, when it wasn't there? Uh, that would be a big difference because, um, for example, some of the new consumers, and then they would love to come and visit to mm. see in the office. Then they can see our whole culture. Mm. Before that, we're just showing them the pictures and showing them the image. So they just can't imagine. But now we can just invite them into our office and then have some more ideas. And also, but now we just the situation now is bad is because of the lockdown mm. yeah because in march in this year we just launched this branch but now it's locked down but it's still okay because we signed someone online by the yeah. meeting it's still working and then but just the, our problem now is just shut off the items because we don't have all the products in new zealand more and more i believe yeah but it just takes time yeah. from talking with you all i can hear the same thing and what i hear is that you were working hard before the branch was even open right you guys were already doing your due diligence building your teams yeah. using the products doing everything that you would have done, you know, if the branch was open already. But with the opening of the branches, you guys have now been able to just grow that much more rapidly because you have that previous experience of knowing what to do and using the product. So awesome. Good job. Good job. And this is something that I want all the global members to hear. And I want them to see that this is how it's done. You know, it's, it's better to start earlier, right? I want to switch to the next session because I hear that you all have a few questions for me. So first question, I think we have it from, let me see, is it Lila? There are people who are afraid to tell their friends about Atomy because of the misconception of MLMs. Mm. So how did you overcome this perception when you just started out? A lot of individuals, I believe, personally, are afraid to share Atomy with other individuals because they lack the understanding of what Atomy really is. So they don't want to approach somebody because they fear they will get rejected because they have this idea in the back of their mind about the traditional other MLMs or network marketing companies. So other network marketing companies and ours, what we can compare is just this one first. Is it, are we giving them value? So my question to you is, what's Atomy providing? We, we provide everyday necessities, toothbrushes, Toothpaste, shampoo is really simple, right? So if you want to yes. approach your friend, just ask him a very simple question. Is, hey, Chris, do you brush your teeth? Says yes. <laughs> okay, good, good. I was hoping you do, right? <laughs> so yeah, you guys brush your teeth, you shampoo your hair. But the thing is, guess what? Yes. Even if you weren't going to use Atomy, you would brush your teeth, shampoo your hair, and use these products. But we've been doing that for years. You've been brushing your teeth, shampooing your hair for years, but you've never been paid 
to use those products from those companies, right? You just gave them the money and they yep. just gave you the product, yes. you just use it. But Atomy, it's a different it's a different business model. What are we doing? We are providing the opportunity for individuals to get paid to use the products that they would be using anyways. So that's a big misconception because in other companies, you would be paying to use those products for the hope of making your money back, right? Because there's an initial investment. There's a starter cost, a starter package, monthly purchase requirements, there's monthly fees. So what I want you to explain to individuals, you wanna keep it short. You don't want to have to try to um, explain Atomy to them in terms of the business model, right? You don't wanna say, well, we're a binary system and this and that and you know. No, it's, it's really simple. Hey, do you brush your teeth? Do you shampoo your hair? Okay, what if I told you, you can get paid for doing these things? They'll say, what, what, how? And then that's what happens, okay? So individuals with this understanding and being afraid, I believe it's because they don't yet understand the value of Atomy yet. So that's a great question, okay? And I wanna make sure that individuals who are listening to this understand that this is a very simple system. Look at the products, see if you wanna use them, see if you need them. If the answer is yes, try them. See if it gives you value in terms of quality and price. If the answer is yes, you have now, you have now opened the door for the opportunity to help other people. And let's transition to the next one for Phoebe, I think has a question for us. When was the hardest time for you doing the business? Oh, very good question. So, so in the very beginning stages for me, it was the fear of getting rejected. So in the beginning, maybe I wasn't very confident, right? But the funny thing is, is we get accustomed to the things that we repeat. At first, when I was sharing Atomy with individuals, of course I got rejected and I was afraid of that, but it got easier and easier because I understood that there's nothing bad to feel about this. Why? Because I'm helping them, right? So if my friend's using a $30 sun cream and I can introduce them to Atomy's, which is cheaper and better, I don't have to feel bad, right? Because I'm helping them and I understood that. So that was the hardship for me in the beginning. Now, after that, when I understood all this and when I was building my business, the next hardship was what? It's always fighting with yourself. What do I mean? Creating those daily goals and making sure you go through with them. So when I'm a sales master, right? And I'm trying to become a diamond master, I have to build not just myself up, but we have to build our partners up and we have to lead, but at the same time, understand how to follow our upline. So things like this, were also difficult at times. But I believe that through this system and even through this experience and through this lecture, we can all relate and we can all learn from each other and we don't have to do it on our own. So um, those were the most difficult times for me. And of course, as your business grows, your difficulty levels may grow in different aspects. And then your other aspects, it'll get easier and easier. So uh, thank you for the question. Um, I hope that answered your question, Phoebe. So I think has a question yep. for us next. Is that right? Yep. If I'm allowed to ask you this, but um, then how much do you make right now? <laughs> how much do I make? Well, let's say this. I have accomplished my dreams of when I was 18. So, so when I was, um, so at a young age, you know, success just looks like dollar sign. So I, I wanted to say, I wanted to make a goal for myself and I wanted to become a millionaire before the age of 30. So I am a millionaire technically. So yes, so I make a, I make a lot of money, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And you will all be millionaires as well soon, right? So thank you for the question and next. So what is your notion of a rich person? Oh, good question. So, so what does it mean to be rich, right? The notion of being rich is not just about money, right? But it's about being able to give and to love other people around you. And mm -hmm. for me, the biggest part for me is um, I got real, real emotional the other day uh, because my wife was talking to me and she showed me a picture of a child. Um, and it was a picture of a child in compassion. Do you guys know compassion, right? World vision, compassion, where you can sponsor the children. So she was showing me a picture of a, of a little girl from the Philippines. And it said that she was uh, on the list to get us to waiting for a sponsor for 400 days and we decided to sponsor her. Um, and I think that's what real, I guess being rich is about, not just buying things, not just spending things on yourself, but being able to share and love those around you and give and invest in those around you. So I want you all to take this question and I want you to be rich sponsors, okay? I want you to be rich partners, not with money, but with love and care for your downline and for your upline, you know, even if we can't do things in terms of with capital or money, we can always do other things that we can, you know, add on to. So if you are a partner and you have a center, you know, helping those individuals in that center, or if you're part of the member in the center, you know, cleaning and helping, you know, all these things I think show you that you are rich at heart, right? It's not about being rich in your bank account because if you're rich in your bank account and you're poor at heart, it's, it's not gonna attract many people. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Lydia. And um, I will try to be more rich right, at heart and to help other people around me. And I hope you guys do the same, right? Um, now we already know how rich you are and that we all <laughs> want to be rich as you. <laughs> so we want to know how. <laughs> so my first question is, do you still remember that your first time when you met a consumer? I'm curious that how did you build that relationship and then when you first time met the people and then make them become your business partners? Well, I still do remember. remember. So how can, <laughs> you, how can you forget your first uh, consumer and business partner, right? Can't forget them. So I remember when I registered and I was all alone in my lineage, right? Just me and my little green box right? And then my little green box turned, turned blue, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, the first, 
the, the beginning, the first way of doing the business for me was um, I was teaching English and I was talking to a lot of people. So I changed the material that I was reading for how to make money and things at home. So my students can read articles about making passive income and reading these articles with me. And then I talked to them about Atomy. <laughs> so after reading these articles, I said, so what if I told you, you can also make about three to $500 a month passively. And they're like, really? How? Tell me, right? And then I told them about Atomy. And then um, I had four. I had four students uh, in the class at the time. Okay, so these were all adult students. Do you want to join? Guess what happened? <laughs> Everybody was quiet. Everybody was. <laughs> Uh, and then one of the ladies, she felt bad for me because everybody else didn't want to join. So she said, I'll join. And then uh, she registered and now she's in a leaders club. <laughs> so wow. yeah, that's how it starts, right? So it was, wow. it was me and then my wife and then my wife's mother. So my mother-in-law and then my father-in-law contacted another person and then that person contacted another person and then that person contacted this gentleman who is now my star master and he's also in the leaders club. So that's how it works. Wow. It's not just from your own personal context. It's contacts of contacts of contacts of contacts. Thank you. Oh, uh, I also have another question because yeah. I'm also very curious about how to motivate new business partners during the stage of becoming an auto sales master because that often takes really long time. That's a good question. So Chris, how long did it take you to become a business partner, you'd say? For me? Yeah. Like, just first met. Oh my goodness, <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> yes. So yes. Let me get because a we love the products. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's the right idea. And that was like that yes. for me too. But let's get a raise of hands of individuals in this room. Tell me, on the first try, you fell in love with Atomy. Raise your hand if that's you, on the first try. <laughs> Everybody in this room? Wow. Yes. That is why you're in this room. That is why you're in this okay. room, right? <laughs> so I believe that there are individuals in the business that just see it. It just clicks and they fall in love with the products. They fall in love with the business model. But sometimes it's not the case. So let's go over a few different ways, a few different aspects to how to uh, build a business. So uh, rule number one is you're doing the business by yourself, right? It's, it's just you. Yep. Nobody else is doing the business for you and nobody else can do the business for you. It's just you. So as you're doing the business, there are different ways, of course, but the best way that I believe that you can continue to build and motivate individuals is to continue to build that relationship with the product and at the same time, get them registered because once you get them registered, what's going to happen? You're going to keep building. So their downline is going to keep growing, right? So let's say that this is, this is one of the tricks that I used. Okay. So if I talk to one of my members and they said, no, I don't want to register. And they say, okay. And then I showed them the lineage. and I say, if you were to register today, you would be here, right here, right? And then I say, since you don't want to register, I understand. Um, I'll come back to you next month, okay? So one month passes and I'm doing my part and I register many, 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 many people. And then I go back the next month and I say, look, hey, I just registered 50 more people. You would have been here, right? You would have been here, but now you missed out on all these people, right? And then you know what they say? They say, oh my goodness, you told me it's free, right? Okay, okay, let me register. And then they get registered, right? That's one of the tips that I always uh, want to share with individuals, but that only works if you are building the business and doing your part, right? At the same time, your success builds motivation. But the most important thing to motivate individuals is culture. I want you to all create a positive culture where we love to just be with each other. The system and the people around you need to keep you here. So that's what should be motivating, okay? So I encourage you all to do that. Don't just focus on the commission because in reality, commissions can take a long time to build or sometimes it's fast. But if you're here only for the money, then you're gonna get burned out soon. So they should be here because they love your handsome face, Chris. All right, good, good. So let's go to the next question, I think. So when doing this business, will it be more important to first build up a network of consumers or prioritize on attaining mastership? Okay, good question. I don't think one is better than the other. You have to do both together. So it, it works together. So for example, if you gain mastership, let's say that you bought your way to a sales master, okay? Let's say that you invested money because you have some money and then you have product now. Well, now you can use the products to build more consumers, okay? But let's say that you don't have capital. Let's say you don't have money right now. And then you build your consumers. And through your consumers, you generate the group PV and you become a sales master, right? And then through your sales master commission, you can now reinvest in yourself and into the product to build your mastership again and then to build consumers again. So it works together. It doesn't go in any other way, I believe. So I think the mistake that is made is this, is only building consumers and not focusing on mastership, right? Or only focusing on mastership and not building true consumers, right? because you can tell when that happens. Now, as your business grows larger, you'll be able to get a difference. If you have a huge concentration of only business partners, then you're gonna get lots of PV, and then your PV is just gonna die away. And then you're gonna get lots of PV, and then your PV is just gonna die away. It's gonna fluctuate up and down, up and down, but the fluctuation should be graphed. It should be going up and up and up and up because your consumers should be filling in the gap for when the business partners aren't buying anymore, you see, right? But if you only have 
consumer focused individuals, right? So you're, they're only consumers. They don't want to reinvest. They don't want to do the mastership. Then you're going to have a very, very, very slow graph of GPV building. Okay. So you need both. So you cannot have one without the other and you need to focus on doing both. So what does it mean to uh, become a business partner? What does it mean to become a consumer? You have to ask yourself these questions as well, right? So a true consumer anatomy is somebody who knows their ID, right? Who knows their password, who knows how to order the products for themselves. And they do so because they love and want to use the product because it gives them value. Those are consumers. So don't mistake your downline members as consumers just because they're registered. Because some of your downline members are just members. They're not consumers. They're just members. And members become consumers. And consumers become independent business owners and part-time business owners and full-time business owners and then duplicated business leaders. You understand? So make sure to focus on both. And your focus needs to be building up the consumers to transition to part-time partners. And all you have to do is add on one more thing. One more thing. What was it? Consumers know their ID, know their password, know how to purchase the product. And business partners only do one more thing. What? They know how to register other members. They know how to register other members and they know how to duplicate this process for them as well. So that's what I think you should focus on. And it's not about prioritizing one after one before the other, but doing both at the same time. And it's a must that you do both at the same time. You have uh, the next question for us. Yes, I just need your advice. And uh, I have someone who I really want to do business together. And, uh, but they are afraid of loss. And uh, how can I encourage them? to join the system? And do you have any personal know-how of your own? This is a difficult question to answer because you have to understand that people make their own choices, right? So I understand that your desire is to do the business with these people that you care about so much. But at the same time, what I want you to do is this, okay? When you build the business, your focus and energy should be on those who want to do the business, right? So if you are a diamond master or a sales master, you know that there are individuals in your downline who desire success like you. They're the ones who got that commission already. They're the ones who are calling you for questions. They're the ones who are looking for new consumers every day without you pushing them to do so. These are the people that you need to prioritize your time and ability and efforts on first. The next individuals are when you have free time. So let's say you already took care of all those people and now you have a few uh, hours free. This is when you want to focus again on those who you have already registered, but not yet interested, like the ones that you want to do the business with. Now, every person is different, okay? Every situation you count, encounter is different. So for example, you can say the same thing to a person and they can hear it and receive it differently than when you say it again next time. So you need to be consistent with those that you want to do the business with because one day, sooner or later, it will click, right? So they will be that consumer. And then as they're consuming the items, maybe they're going to start hearing rumors about your success and people around you and everybody using Atomy skincare, and then they'll get more interested, right? So it is very important to what? Number one, focus on those who need your time first. Number two, keep relationship with those even that are not that interested with the business yet. You need to keep relationships with those as well. And as you do this, it is all about maintaining relationship and growth with all the individuals in your downline, okay? So don't forget about them and keep going back and touching bases with them, Esther, but don't focus all your energy on just a single person. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your amazing questions. And I pray that you have amazing success and see you all at the top, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.